Okay, so before I start this review, I feel like I need to be very clear that I am not trying to pretend like I'm a good welder or know how to weld or I'm not trying to teach anyone any uh, techniques or really getting advice whatsoever. This video is a review and comparison for the Deco Pro Amazon 110 to 220 uh, stick welder. There are a few reviews out there already. The problem with those are people using them know how to weld. And so if you're a novice like me and you're watching uh, review videos on a welder, uh, it's, it's hard to get a real good feel and apples to apples comparison of how it's gonna perform for me. And these uncoordinated hands versus a somebody who's been welding forever. So. What I want to do first is um, kind of go through the ins and outs, the pros and cons of, of the Deco welder, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll weld. I've got some 3 inch by 3 inch square tube prepped. We'll run a couple beads with each welder uh, on both sides, and we'll kind of just see what you can expect. So the reason I'm using the 220 uh, buzz box is because, well, it's the only other stick welder I have for comparison, but it's also the most, you know, it's the most common welder you're gonna find in a garage. That welder's been in my family for probably 40 years. Um, you probably know someone with one as well. So if you really want to know, you know, should I go with a, you know, the tried and true Lincoln, uh, you know, you spend your money on that. Or if you can get similar results out of the $120 Deco on Amazon, well, that might be a good option for you. So immediate pro, for the Deco um, is its versatility. This buzz box here is sitting where it is because it's got a cord that's about five or six feet long and my outlet is right there under my uh, uh, breaker box. So that's, that's where it sits. That's the only place it can go. The Deco is tiny. I mean, it is the size of the shoe box um, and it can go anywhere. And I've ran this thing on a 100 foot, 120 foot long extension cord in my backyard all day long. It's actually what I was doing with it today. And so that's what gave me an idea to make this video. I've had a lot of questions on it the more that I've used it and people have been really surprised by how well it works. So I haven't done a side by side comparison yet. So this is new to me too. So this is not, this is not planned or prepared. There, we got the suspense out of the way. Um, so that's the main thing. It's it's super it's super um, portable, convenient. Um, you could easily keep this under your back seat or in your trunk with a, a hood and some gloves and some and some rod for emergencies, which is actually what I've done with it already. It fits really well in a five gallon bucket with all your supplies you need. So that's one of the good things about it. Other benefits, pros, cons about it. Um, obviously, one huge pro is. The cost it's 130 bucks i think now on prime um and it's worked it's worked really well so far um your typical buzz box here is i don't know that's you get those three four hundred bucks now and i think you have to pay more so this has got the ac and dc option which uh costs a little bit more now if you try to get one of these from the store um, The Deco does not have a DC option. All you have are your two leads and a dial. Now the dial itself is fairly obvious how that works. Um, So it's got the, the dial where you select your amperage and the digital readout on the screen. Um, so it doesn't show true voltage draw. It, re it really only shows you on that LCD screen what you have it selected it to or what you have it um, set to. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The out in the sun, this screen is actually really hard to see, but it's, you know, if you just look at the dial, you'll know what you're getting. Um, the, the duty cycle on it isn't great, and I won't, I'm not going to guess. I don't know the specs, but I do know 
that I've ran it pretty hard for multiple minutes continuous and my breaker tripped before the, uh, the unit shut itself down. I'm going to turn that off so you can hear it a little bit better. So I have this running on a 20 amp breaker for the most part, but it's the same breaker that my, uh, my living room and my entryway and my outdoor uh, receptacles are on. So today, you know, my, my TV was on, my lights were on, and this thing was still running just fine. So it's, it does a good job, and that was at 120 amps. So pretty impressive that it, that it can do that. It did, I did trip the breaker probably five or six times, but I was using it all day long. It comes with your standard 220 adapter cable. So it'll, it'll run off it'll run off either one for this test for this comparison video and review I'm only going to use the 110 um, because if you're looking for a welder that's in this price range you probably want something you probably want to use 110 um, but it does do 220 well honestly even though I have 220 here in the in the garage I just run it off 110 even when I'm close to the receptacle all right, for the demonstration or comparison, what have you, I'm going to use Hobart 7018 AC rods. They're 8-inch. So, good all-purpose rod for what I'm doing. Yes, there's probably something better, but I don't know what it is. So, for the test, we're going to use a, a brand new cold rod for each machine and we're going to use cold metal for each machine. So I think what we'll do is I will use the deco on this larger sample. I know that it's not going to be exactly the same test because the because the metal is different sizes and it's going to heat up a little bit slower blah 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 this is just to give you an idea of what you can expect to do if you buy one of these because like I said before if a 30 year veteran welder can make a decent pass with this that's great you know, you expect that even on a cheap machine. But if I can make an acceptable weld with a cheap machine, then it has value, in my opinion. So, without further ado, we're gonna put our safety gear on. Where's my magnet? All right, these pieces have already been slightly beveled on the seams and and cleaned with a uh, one of those weird poly brush things that takes paint off super easy. And I don't have a whole lot of uh, clamps and fancy welding tables and stuff, so I'm going to use this magnet and I'm going to go ahead and tack uh, the four corners of this, and then I'll pull it off and then we'll we'll go ahead and get started. So. I'm going to run this at, what was it at, 120 amps? I've never tried to uh, record welding on a phone. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Okay, we'll flip it over. Anyone else ever think it's weird when people are learning how to weld and the old timers say, 
just, it's like striking a match. Who the hell strikes matches? I've never struck a match. Or maybe I have, but it's hardly like a like a common movement. Definitely not in my muscle memory. Okay. So I think that's going to hold up pretty well. So I may just run a quick little tack and then I'll start the process here. Look at that, I'm striking a match. Okay, good enough, let's start. Got away from me. Oh boy. Alright, well. You know what they say? I don't know what I'm doing. So, you know, it's not the worst. Got good penetration. This is a uh, 11 gauge angle. I'm sorry, square tube, by the way. So, there we go. Let's hop over here to the other side. Now my rod's a little hot. Can you see? Strike in a match. Oh, God, that's bad. This thing gets hot. Dang, okay. Well, I'll be honest. I Okay, that's not the worst. I probably should have gone a little bit faster. So you can see there, the penetration wasn't great, but it's, I don't know. It doesn't look terrible, and that would probably grind down pretty nice. So that's what an untrained, you know, regular guy can do out of the box of this thing. I've had zero training. I've burned through, I don't know, a handful of rods. I've probably, I've probably used this on, uh, I don't know, however many rods that is. 10 pounds. So I've probably, you know, used five pounds of rods. So, that's what you can do with that. Let's go ahead and shut this thing down. One thing, while we're on the deco, I will say, um, it shocked me earlier, and and my dad. It did, I, well, I don't know if it was the welder. We were we were putting the fence together, welding up some uh, stringers on a fence on a steel fence, and uh, we both felt some electric juices flowing through our body as I was welding with this in the back. So I don't know if that's common for welding in general, or if it's specific to this, or we were doing something wrong, but uh, maybe somebody watching this knows what I was doing wrong. But anyway, so I just wanted to throw that out there. There's a chance that you could be mildly shocked. So, it didn't hurt that bad though. I'm still gonna use it. Okay, now we are clamped up and set up for the Lincoln 220. We're gonna run on AC. 
I'm gonna run this one at, I guess it's not fair that I run it at different amps. So I guess I'm gonna run it at 120. I've never ran this one so hot before. So we'll see. Uh, one thing to note, the ground clamp on the Lincoln is significantly better. And I don't even know if this is factory, it's so old. The deco clamp, ground clamp is yeah, lackluster, leaves a little bit to be desired, um, but it does the job. And I know those are easy to upgrade, so not a big deal. One other thing I was gonna mention um, on the deco before I start the Lincoln test was when the rods seem to stick when I'm using the deco, it is a nightmare to get them off. Half the time I destroy the rod trying to get it off. I, I do feel like with the Lincoln, if I stick a rod, it tends to come off a little bit better and I don't know why. So I'm just throwing that out there. So we're going to keep the Lincoln humming, buzzing, whatever. Cold metal, brand new cold rod. They're gonna attack these two sides, flip it over, and then run a line or a bead, whatever. I feel like I'm gonna blow through this thing. That seems hot. I usually run this on 90, so let's do that. Okay, so I stuck, I stuck the rod, which is what I wanted to not do. That's part of it. Part of being an amateur, everything. So, let's see if we can just run a straight bead across here. Okay, so clearly got good penetration. Better than we did with the Deco. Um, I don't know if that means that the Deco is not gonna be as strong or if maybe I got too much here. I do feel like that was a little hot. Obviously doing something wrong there. Not sure what it is, but it's attached. Let's do this backside now real quick. Let's see if we can get this done a little, a little more finesse. Not a straight line. See a little bit blown red through there. So 
so, you know, here's what we got. The Deco on the left, the Lincoln 220 on the right. None of them are pretty. I think they'd all hold up pretty well. Um, here's where I'm at on this. They both, they both do the job. The duty cycle on the Lincoln's going to be a lot better. The um, options in terms of selecting your amperages and your DC or AC is going to be a lot better. I'll be honest with you. I don't know when or where that's going to be even be uh, the most relevant. I just leave it in AC because um, <laughs> I'm just I'm still learning, so that's not a big deal. Um, if you need something convenient, something portable, this is great. If you've only got a couple hundred bucks to get started, and you still got to get your gloves and your hood, and you know a hammer and some rods, man, going with this and practicing. Man, I don't think you can lose. I, I'm, I'm glad I have both. When I'm in the garage, I'll use the Lincoln. Um, just because it, it, it works fine. And I, I save this uh, guy for our outdoor adventures where I need to run a long extension cord. So all in all, it's been great. I will, uh, I will make an updated video if my opinion changes. But so far, so good. Thanks.